Oh, we have to say ready. Go on. <laughs> yeah. Ready, ready now? Ready, Are we wait, ready now? On. Okay. You ready now? Yeah. Gucci. And hello, everyone. Welcome to Just BSing, the very first episode of our new show here on twitch.tv slash bottom shelf nerds. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can always catch us live. They're over at, at the aforementioned link, twitch.tv slash bottom shelf nerds. I'm your host, Thomas, for this week's episode. And I'm Joe, the co host. For this week's episode, we may alternate week's. back and forth on who's driving uh, the stream and, by extension, who is the host of that week's episode. Outside of maybe planning for any internet issues, given that it is a live streamed podcast. So if, yes. like, Joey has a net network issue, but he still wants to host and he doesn't have a good up with, upload bandwidth, he may still host and I may stream. But that's that's a little behind, little inside baseball stuff for you, so I don't want to get too deep in on that. But we are the Bottom Shelf Nerds, if you're watching this for the very very first time, because I'm hoping we can get some new viewers out of this. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. And maybe even on audio formats, too. I'm um, looking to get our SoundCloud up and do some other things to eventually maybe get this on iTunes if we want to. But that's going to be a little involved process. So... Yeah, I don't want to get too into who we are and stuff. If you're interested in what we talk about tonight, definitely follow us over on our Twitch channel where we live stream and talk about the kind of shit we're going to be talking about in a lot longer form because it's just strewn about over three and four hour streams as opposed to a hopefully around one hour podcast. So, Joey, let's get right into yes. it because what the internet needs right now is two random dudes from Iowa talking about nerdy shit. They Clearly do. They need the, more of this. The internet needs more of it. So let's just dive right into it. This past weekend, we both went and saw Shazam. Yes. It was a really, really good time. I I thoroughly enjoyed the movie, but since I've dominated this intro here, also on our rundown, I gotta say, on our on top of our rundown, we got we got Shazam. Our thoughts. We're gonna do some spoiler-free topics, and then we're gonna get into spoilers a little bit. Yep. Then we're gonna talk about Game of Thrones season eight, and if we have time, Avengers Endgame. If not, we'll push that to next week alongside Hellboy, and then, of course, our Game of Thrones reaction from Episode 1. And we're going to end it with a little segment we call Fuck It, We'll Do It Live, where I, where I or Joey watch a trailer or movie for a clip for the first time and give our thoughts on it. And that'll be the show, hopefully. I've got some backup topics. But, Joey, since I've dominated the intro stuff here as the host, of course I should, uh, what would you think of Shazam? Uh, it was good. I went in it with no expectations, really. I just kind of saw it like uh, you put it good. I think we were talking about someone and they were complaining how the Shazam outfit looked. But I think you put it nicely is that it's kind of a kid's rendition of what a superhero should look like. Um, so that didn't bother me at all. Um, well, Zachary Levi felt did a really good job of acting Shazam. And the kid actors, I thought everyone did good. And it did gangbusters in the box office, it looks like. Yeah, for an April release, like sandwiched between two marvel big ones because you know captain marvel which is yep. actually the name of shazam as yeah, a character so uh, which is weird it's a whole weird weird ass backstory and i think pretty cool because especially they can get away with calling him captain marvel in pretty much everything animated which i think is interesting but not in not in movies which is weird, weird. um but yeah the rights thing? Yeah, yeah it's it's like basically cap marvel has to continually print a captain marvel comic or the trademark will revert to DC because theirs is older. Oh. But because DC stopped producing the comic, they got a, they they can't they lost the trademark initially. Oh, essentially, shit. yeah. I guess some Cap weird Captain area. Marvel's history is fucking crazy. It starts yeah. in the 30s and 50s and stuff after the Fawcett <coughs> Comics and you know 30s through 50s with like Fawcett Comics versus DC and then it moves into DC versus Marvel. It's weird and multiple lawsuits and lots of weird incarnations sure. of similar characters. <laughs> some crazy shit uh but yeah he kind of hits on the big ones for me zachary levi i've been a huge fan of him since chuck that is Oof. one of my all-time favorite shows if you have amazon prime right now by the way it's all on amazon so you know do yourself a favor fix your life a little bit and watch chuck uh it's it's a fantastic nerd show really freaking good especially compared to one that's thank god fucking going off the air in big bang theory <laughs> uh also hey ty what's up we do look professional look good yeah. and that's right people since it's live we can talk to the chat <clears throat> if you want to ask us questions <clears throat> or comments on like what we're talking about like if you should go see shazam while we're talking about it you can do that over at twitch.tv slash bottom shelf nerds that's all spelled out uh you know because we're the bottom shelf of twitch etc etc maybe one day we'll get to mid mid shelf but mid shelf that's that's a little something maybe too high of hopes so something we'll, above hawkeye vodka yes maybe 
you know, <laughs> maybe we'll get into something like decent, you know, yeah. possibly. Let's, let's talk about the hundred fifty five million dollars the fucking yeah, Shazam made worldwide. Yeah, it did. Uh, it did real good. Uh, what did it have? It had like fifty three point five million. I want to say here. Let me look up. I've got the CBR dot com worldwide yeah. box office. We'll go to our just BSing scene two. Whoa. Where we're both in the corners. Think <sighs> crazy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> earned over $50 million on its opening weekend domestically. I think on Box Office Mojo it had it at $53.5 million, okay. uh, with a worldwide total of 155 which is pretty awesome. Uh, you know, it's back-to-back gangbuster openings and opening weekends for DC coming off a uh, pretty big clusterfuck that was Justice League. Uh, so yes. all things considered, I think they've financially rebounded pretty well because both of them did open, I think, I don't know if what it compared to opening wise for Justice League, but it has way better buzz. So I'm willing to bet its second weekend will be better than Justice League's second yeah. weekend. Um, and obviously, Aquaman hit a billion fucking dollars, so which is cool, which is crazy. <laughs> uh, so like, and if they can keep it going with Wonder Woman 1984, I mean, that'll be three in a row now where they seem like they've nailed it and figured out. Oh, you just tell good standalone movies, and then maybe connect up, connect the dots do a little hand-waving exposition as to why they hadn't met up before or since the last time, bam! You're setting yourself up for an Avengers-style movie. Who'd have thought? You know? Maybe that was what they should have done the fucking first time. But no, <laughs> DC's got their heads so far up their ass. Or rather, WB has their heads so far up their ass. Yeah. They can't get out of DC's way. Which is really annoying. Uh, but yeah. Zachary Levi was fantastic. I'm going to go back to the full screen webcams here. Yeah. Um, Zachary Levi was awesome. Uh, like you said, the kid actors, it's, it's, they hit, they yeah. hit their lottery on nailing all these characters. Uh, they really I mean, yeah, did. they don't have a lot of great parts individually. Only like two or three kids actually like have an arc. You know, like there's one guy who was, he yeah. has like five lines of dialogue, max. Yeah. Uh, and he'll probably get more in the other movie. And the older yeah. sister doesn't have a whole lot to do. The youngest sister's fantastic, Darla. She's she's hilarious. Yeah. And it's really... But the core of them... And that's okay, because the core of the movie is Billy Batson and Freddy. Their yep. friendship and them figuring out how to be brothers, basically. That's the movie. It's not the hero versus villain, which I really do like. Uh, it's very much these two kids trying to figure out how to like, get along, <laughs> fit together, and be better people while they're growing up. Yeah. I very much enjoyed that. It's very much a departure from the, at least so far, what's been happening in the DC outside of, you know, the kind of more different slant at viewing, like, heroism and stuff that you would see in, like, a, in Wonder Woman. Um, this very much cuts against the grain of what Zack Snyder has been doing uh, with yeah. his, uh, you know, slugfest of movies where he thinks Superman just needs to constantly question his own existence as though he's, you know, a petulant 14-year-old. Uh, uh, yeah. That, that's a weird decision for Superman. Um, I know. I, I honestly, uh, when I have the what Henry Cavill can do in my head, I'm like, dude, he fucking nail it in a Shazam movie. Like, there's the Shazam versus Black Adam uh, short. It's like 22 minutes. It's on DC Universe right now. And you can find it online. Uh, where Black Adam has been exiled for 10,000 years, 5,000 years, comes back to Earth. And Superman in Clark Kent's guise is inter is interviewing a homeless Billy Batson who's just gotten the power of Shazam and okay. or is just about to get the power of Shazam I should say <clears throat> and so then Superman and Black Adam are going at it and he and he teams up with with Shazam and kind of takes on this like mentor type role which is like yeah I want to see Henry Cavill do that it'd be amazing I yeah, want to see cool that take. and I think and I think it would work so great to have it to kind of fix a little bit of his character in the DCEU at large um, yeah. but I don't think we've spoiled anything so far outside of the answer. Yes, there are kid actors. They all kind of had smaller yeah. arcs outside of the two friends. Mark Strong is predictably pretty solid as the villain. He doesn't have a whole lot okay. to do because the villain's not the main role. Yeah. It was kind of like they gave a little bit of background why he became a villain, and then it was just mostly just Billy Batson. And then Which, again, the point of the movie is not the villain. It's not the fight yeah. against, oh, we're going to stop the apocalypse. Yeah, it's not no. good versus evil. Just it's yeah, it's not like Superman versus Batman stupid fight bullshit. No, it's yeah. it's very much about the fam family connections going on in the movie, and that really does pay off at the end. Like they set this groundwork up, and then they don't swerve their act in the third to just do something totally stupid that doesn't make sense with what came before. It all pays off basically, which is actually not 
something DC has been able to do consistently. And if they can continue to do that, they'll they will begin to I think see better returns like what they are with Aquaman, which again, it very much paid off what was set up in the first two acts of the fight against King Orm and trying to stop a war, right? Very much pays that off at the end. And this is the same thing. It very much pays off the figuring out how to like be be in a family, you know, as an outsider kind of thing. Yeah. It's coming and in it, and... and it really pays that off super well. Um Sets up the tease for maybe Black Adam too, if The Rock wants to continue in the role. Oh, yeah! You'll have to tell me about the tease. Like, all right, so right, going a little bit spoiler territory. Uh, this, here. yeah. So we're right here. Heads up, my spoiler hands. Spoilers. Yeah. Spoilers. Yeah. Uh. So. So yeah, the tease. Explain so, me the tease that might reference Black Adam, because as a person going in with no knowledge, I just kind of saw a caterpillar. No, Talk that's Mr. Mind, that's different that, character. That's Mr. Mind? Okay. Black right. Adam is so, basically is the champion that went bad. Okay. So like when Shazam gets his powers, when Billy gets his powers yes. from the wizard, he's like, there was a champion thousands of years ago, he went bad, mm-hmm. and he unleashed the seven sins and worked beside them oh. with our power and nearly destroyed the world. Okay, yeah. That's yep. Black Adam. Yeah. And cool they it was like that hologram, that sparkle mm-hmm. hologram thing, kind of like yeah. Groot's powers in uh, Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy. <laughs> and... Yeah, yeah. Which also <clears throat> had Jaman, how have you say his name? Who was also in Captain Marvel in a movie that has also Captain Marvel in it now with Shazam? <laughs> fucking weird. The guy's in both both universes like a fucking G. It's awesome. Love that guy. And uh, and he gets and I think the Wizard of Shazam was pretty cool. As I, yeah. Very hokey, you know, over the top. But that's also the point. Yeah. Um, and so he, he shows him like, hey, this is what happened in the past, and it looks just enough like The Rock. I'm like, yeah. I want to see The Rock going up going up against Zachary Levi. I didn't Dude, think I'd want is... to see that when Zachary Levi was cast. Because Zachary Levi was cast like only a few months after they were like, hey, The Rock is still doing Black Adam, guys. So I was like, Jeez. okay, you know you're doing The Rock as Black Adam. And you got Zachary Levi. I mean, he's tall, but yeah. he's skinny. Like, oh, he's yeah. a, he's a lanky rock. dude. Ooh. He's not a Chris Evans getting <clears throat> ripped dude. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah, he's wearing a muscle suit because... He should. I mean, he kind of is because he's an idealized, fourteen-year-old's idealized version of what a superhero is, essentially. Mm-hmm. And he's him at his biggest potential, basically, as as it is set up, as his best potential, as it's pretty much set up uh, in the universe. But how he used his powers was super cool. Like the scene where yeah. when they're figuring out that he has uh, hyperspeed and then he's bulletproof. <laughs> that yeah. was really cool. Uh, the whole thing with them putting all these trials up on YouTube. Yeah, ten hilarious. out of ten. It was fucking yeah. perfect. It was an um, it was an awesome second act of them figuring out what's going on with these oh, characters, yeah. and then <laughs> also like they juggled this. It was it was very much so a superhero eighties comedy, juggled with uh, a very down to earth kind of heartbreaking story about his backstory about like what oh. happened with his mom yeah, and how he kind of. he has these rose colored glasses of the th- memories when he's like three. Mm. And it turns out, no, your mom sucked, and she abandoned you, and barely remembers you. Yeah, she was, right. It was a real like that yeah, got to me. I was like, shit, that that, like, that hurts. Come I was on, not DC. What I was expecting. Come on, DC. and that's what's good about this movie. It does it a couple times to me, where I'm like, in the beginning scene, we kind of go to like, I would have cut to like a little bit of the fight scene with the villain. Okay. Um, because in the beginning scene, she's playing darts, trying to get Billy freaking this tiger. They're talking about because they're at a uh, due to carnival. Which the tiger yeah. is a reference to Mister Tawny, I think, who is a actually talking tiger who has like kind of is connected to the wizard Shazam. Kind of oh, like shit. it's kind of like his guardian. Okay. Weird. Like his magical but, uh, guardian kind of thing. Oh, so that's why I probably wanted the tiger. Makes sense. I I didn't see that kind of connection. No, but, it, uh, it, they didn't. They weren't paying that off at all. It was just an homage. Okay. Homage to it. Okay. No, but uh, she's doing the dart thing, and then when the villain, I saw like he had the eye, and then they were fighting at a carnival. I'm like, they're not doing that kind of like cheesy tie-in, like the beginning to the end. Like, well, it started with a game of darts. We're gonna end with a game of darts, essentially. I'm like, don't fucking. And it doesn't happen. Tom, explain to me, explain to the audience what actually happens in the fight scene. What do you mean? What about the fight scene? The Shazam family? Oh, the Shazam family, yeah. That's yeah. the big twist. So hang on, Holy I gotta... Holy F! I gotta actually hit record. Whoops.
Yeah. So we're recording now. But I should be able to download that first, <laughs> yeah. what, 10 minutes, 12 minutes of the podcast? Okay. Um, and clip that together. Hopefully seamlessly. <sighs> we'll see what happens. Hopefully. Um, but yeah, so the, one of the big twists at the end is not anything with the villain or like Billy's mm-hmm. own backstory. That actually happens like at the very beginning of the third act, which was a nice swerve. Um, yeah. It's the fact that, no, he figures out, oh, I can share this power with my family. And yeah. it's unclear to me if each of the individual family, which there are only six, there are seven mm-hmm. wizards, so one of the power went to Black Adam, to making a full seven, that have the power currently. Um, it's unclear if his siblings have the full power or if they each have one of the powers. Because Shazam is also six letters. You know, the what is it, the strength? It's the wisdom of Solomon, strength of Hercules, the stamina of Atlas, the power of Zeus, the courage of Achilles, and the speed of Mercury. And they actually, the wizard Shazam actually says that when he gives Billy his powers. And uh, it's unclear if his siblings each get one of those powers or if they actually have all of them like Billy does. Because he clearly has all of the powers. Yeah. Um, but that was cool, and it definitely made the fight more about the family as as opposed to beating the villains, which is a nice yeah. change of pace from general superhero movies. Um, not a perfect movie, you know. I mean, it's yeah. it's younger actors and stuff, so like some of the stuff yeah. doesn't always land. Um, but it was really fun. Like you literally could not escape the fact that man, this is just this is a fucking fun time. I love it this. Was. I just had a big smile on my face pretty much the whole damn time, except for like the really like heart wrenching stuff, yeah. uh, you know, and like especially the one of the shocking scenes too about uh, like it was very much so like they weren't shying away from like shit that was dark kind of when John Glover, who also played Lionel Luther, Lex Luthor's dad on Smallville, as the dad of the villain, and when he when you think he's gonna die like in the in the car crash in the beginning, and when they cut to him in the snow yeah. and he's lying bleeding and just like barely oh, able to yeah. speak, I'm like damn that's a little out there for a movie that's this going this it's going this hard at like the pg type audience and then when they when he busts into the boardroom and the guy like eats a dude like shit this is clearly meant to be a little like a little freaky for some kids like very much so oh we're trying to freak out some five-year-olds here (laughs) and like it was very effective in that regard um yeah i said it was a lot of fun and if dc can continue to build off this and build off that cameo in the last 15 seconds when he's like oh i hope hope you don't mind i called a friend and they cut and the superman theme kicks on and i'm pretty sure it was the og superman theme too wasn't it the trumpets the the john uh john williams theme from the christopher reeve movies and it when Uh, superman walks in and sits down hard cut because you can't see henry cavill's face yeah i thought he was on set i swear they said he was on set maybe filming something it's a similar suit is it the same suit yeah, it's it's We're the still, suit. Okay. It's the it's the Man of Steel Justice League suit. Yeah, I know it's um, super like was a different. I don't think it was Cavill, but he could have been he could have been not as bulked up because this was filmed yeah. well after Fallout. This was filmed okay. quite a bit later, so maybe he just didn't bulk up because it doesn't take you a lot to lose that bulk. No, it doesn't. You know, he could have just slimmed down to get ready for that Netflix role he's got <laughs> as Geralt of Rivera or whatever. He's doing. He's Geralt on the Netflix Witcher series. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, oh yeah so he definitely would have to slim down for that role so that makes sense so yeah. maybe it was him and they just decided to cut at the face because there's rumors he may yeah. not come back for uh, more movies which i hope they i hope they make it work i hope they realize Same. oh fun upbeat superhero movies who do we got yeah. in our stable that can do fun and upbeat oh superman maybe yeah he can maybe. be that way put superman if you're not going to give him his own movie hulk him put him in other movies there Put him go. in other characters' cool. movies to be that other character, that other lead, like a second lead. Yeah. Put him beside the Flash. Put him beside Billy. Put him beside maybe do like a Nightwing or something. You know. Ooh, Put him go. on a more grounded superhero movie. Yeah. Like about another character and just have him pop in as like a friend of you know of you know, just have him be like that guy. Especially yeah. as towards <laughs> like the Flash and uh, maybe Cyborg and or Billy. He have him be the mentor guy because he should be. Yeah. Right? He's the guy with all the power. So how do you yeah, handle I mean, having that much power? You talk to the guy who's basically the living living embodiment of power. Right? Exactly. Make him almost kind of like Iron Man. And if you're going to have yeah. him fight Black Adam, if you're going to riff off the Superman, the Shazam Black Adam story, having Superman fight Black Adam, you, I want to cool. see Henry Cavill go toe-to-toe with The Rock. 
Dude, that would be a sweet mashup. I yeah, want let to him see keep that. the facial hair. Let him let there. him just rock the dad beard. I want just Superman, do it. Superman in the post uh what is oh rebirth when he when he, when he comes back uh from the alternate universe when he's yeah, the other the other universe of Superman, he's got a kid and he's just rocking the beard. Like, fuck yeah. Give me black give me black suit Superman, no cape, full beard. Fuck yeah. Just saying. Also, what's up, Jaren? That's right, people. We're still talking to chat. Jaren, have you seen Shazam? Because we're, we're right now we're in the middle of spoiler talk. Yep. So don't want to ruin you. Well, actually, we're just about to wrap up the Shazam side of things. Ruin yeah. Ruin. So we'll see what happens on that front. How you doing, man? Been a while. Only streamed like okay. twice in the last week and a half. So we'll get there. Uh, sure. We're getting back on track. Don't worry. Now that we're into spring, winter's over, and the conversion of my work is done. Oh, my God. It's so crazy. Dude, you got some weird stuff like so much, cards. so much shit's I had to get, broken. Like, a new phone number to call in and stuff like that. Now it works, thank God. But so much shit's broken. Like, All right. Anyway, um, since you haven't seen it, I'm just gonna wrap up our section on Shazam and say, go see Shazam. It's awesome. Can we talk about the last last cut scene, which is just kind of a throw. Oh, the, oh, I love Freddy. the world building this movie did too. Uh, yeah, really. Freddie's wearing a different superhero shirt every scene. Like, every single day he's wearing Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Batman, Superman, Flash. And the cut, the final cut scene is them trying to figure out Shazam's powers. And this is clearly set up as, like, a deleted scene that they didn't put on yeah. YouTube or something. And when it's him trying to learn how to talk to fish, he's like, <laughs> talk to fish, cross it out. Is that even really that cool of a power? And then Freddy holds up an Aquaman shirt and goes, dude, yeah. imagine commanding an army of billions. And he goes, yeah, but I mean, they're fish, so that sucks. Aquaman's yeah, not I cool, just, bro. And then cut. Like, I, I just like that scene. Yeah, that I want to really see good. Billy hang out with uh, this version of Aquaman. I think it'd be hilarious. Oh, be it would really be good. like they would just be. It would be such <sighs> shit talking for like two hours. It would be because like good, Aquaman clearly a shit talker, but not an asshole shit talker. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. he's just a dude who's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna run my mouth about everything, but still be a good guy, and. That was one thing that uh, I was reading. I think it was a it was an AV Club article. I'd have to have to check, but they were like, "Yeah, like since Justice League, they've gone in the direction of not making their leads assholes." That's good. Like all the male leads have actually just been pretty good people. Like Billy got some issues because yeah. you know he's fourteen and been abandoned and all that, but he's yeah. figuring out how to be okay with himself and his past. And Aquaman. Kind of a brash dude, but in the end he's like, yeah. "Well, yeah, I'm not gonna let the world die. Fuck no, you!" No, no, no. And he just goes to town, and and he's basically Jason Momoa. So uh, yes. hard not to That's love that. To hard not to love That's that true. at all. So because like that guy doesn't even like do actual like weight training. Shit, he does, fucking like, huge. He does apparently. He just does like the best way to describe it is just, like very manly things. Like apparently he does like a lot of axe throwing and just like climbing, netting and shit like that. I'm like he's the kind of guy who just like. Off? Fuck it, I'm gonna throw around tire t tractor tires all day. Yeah, and that's like I'm just naturally ripped like this. I'm like, God dang, he's just he's, got a good gene for he's, being ripped. Well, that he's 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 fucking huge. Yeah, like now, if they were gonna have cast someone ten years ago to be Shazam, I'd be like shit. Oof. If you want to get, oh, what is is he Samoan? I believe so, because they do a lot of yeah, and then you get the yeah, he, yeah. Dances. If you'd have got, like, a person that looked like young him, shit, I could have seen Momoa ten years ago be Shazam. And, yeah, it wouldn't have entirely fit, but ten years ago The Rock versus ten years ago Jason Momoa, holy shit! Because ten years ago he would have been cast as Cal Drogo. He's, basically, that's how Cal Drogo oh, looked. God. Like, yeah. fuck, see that go against The Rock? Oh, my God. Damn. That would have been amazing. You wouldn't have needed no muscle suit. He'd have been kicked no, ass dude, he by himself. <laughs> All right, I think that about wraps it up on Shazam, Joey. Our final thoughts are, go see this movie, because I think I think it's the best all-encompassing movie DC's put out since The Dark Knight. I agree, yeah. So going on 11 years, it's the best movie they've put out. It's, I think Wonder Woman has a better second act and a second act fight. Like that fight when she... When she comes out onto no man's land, taking on oh, the bullets, yeah. and she leaps over and goes into the town of that town fight. Yeah. Absolutely one That's of the good. best superhero sequences I've ever watched. In any is movie, there, it's fantastic. Is, is there even a... In the second act, is there even a fight, Shazam? Kind of. 
when they fight and they yeah. go to the mall and the Santa okay, freaks yeah. out. And that's the running yeah, gag of Santa out. freaking out really <laughs> reminded me of the cabbage guy in Avatar, The Last Airbender. My cabbages! Oh, God! It really what reminded me you? of that. <laughs> it was very much a kid's show trope that yeah. kept as a running gag. So good. Yeah. I'll always be there for you. Just runs off and they rip up through the ground. Yeah, yeah. sorry. And then when he freak comes out on the end of the, at that takes over the interview and just starts freaking swearing left and right and they bleep <laughs> yeah. it all out. Top notch. Yeah, that was really good. About that uh, but yeah, and I think sequential as as a whole, actually one through three, I think Shazam is the best movie DC has put out okay. in the entirety of their DC EU, and I think is the best since The Dark Knight. Will agree. All right. So yeah. next up on our list is. Oh. Cabbage guy actually gets arrested. Yeah, but he starts Cabbage Corp. That's a whole thing in Legend of Korra is the Cabbage guy starts Cabbage Corp and he makes really shitty airships compared to Asami's airships, which is fucking hilarious. I love it. It's so good. That's just such a great like, narrative take for a spinoff show to continue such a weird offshoot thread and make yeah. it a core component of a character's backstory. <laughs> Top notch. That's hilarious. Top notch. Holy crap. I like that a lot. <laughs> All right. So we're moving on, Joey. And yes. what better way to set that tone than a little trailer dun, action? Dun, 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 I haven't said we're not getting no copyright strike. Oh, okay. Stop. Now, we may get a copyright yeah. strike. So if, if, we, this trailer, <laughs> if this trailer gets blocked, we may have to cut this section. So if there's a hard cut, we watch the Game of Thrones Season 8 official tease, colon, Aftermath, parentheses, HBO, close parentheses. Here we go. <laughs> Had to do it. <laughs> Had to do it. All right. Press play. Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, you at zero? Yes. Press play in three, two, one. joy so game of thrones season eight it is upon us in fact what? might i suggest something if anyone who watches this in the coming week wants to get in on us you can check us out on our discord too you can just find all that on our twitch channel when we go live th throughout the week over at twitch.tv slash bottom shelf nerds i almost dropped my pen but i caught it because i'm a ninja you uh, dropper I'm a, so it's, i was gonna make another joke but i'm not gonna make one there uh what about, how about if we do a little uh, Season 7 watch-along over on our Rabbit? Saturday. Um, April 14th, that's coming up. We can do it. Yeah, we can easily do it. Yeah, I mean, it's only six episodes last season. Yeah. I forget how short last season was. Or was it eight? No. It was... I... Four was the loot train. Five was the thing. Six is going to be on the wall. Seven is the dragon's meeting. Okay. Joey in his sweater vest, I know. It's so fantastic, Rhoda. Uh, so yeah, let's. I think we should try that because now that Rabbit, yep. Rabbit is built into Chrome, we should be able to stream HBO to Rabbit. So if you guys okay. want, I'm good to do that uh, at least Sunday, if not both days. We could do three and three. Yeah. Um, I'd, be, I'd be game. Yeah. We'll discuss that in Discord. Um, yeah. So and if you want to watch movie nights and stuff like that, you got to get out of our Discord because I'm going to be getting better about movie nights now that... The MCU is wrapping up for RT Iowa. Uh, welcome, fellow nerds, indeed, Jaron. Mm -hmm. You guys, if you want to talk to some dope people and you know you want to want to meet new awesome people, you should come over to our Twitch channel and check out people like Ty and Rhoda and Jaron who are in Twitch chat right now. And uh, you know, 
talk shit about us while we're live. Because that's pretty much what we do. Is just give each other shit. So Joey, let's yeah. look back a little at Game of Thrones. It's been what? Nearly ten years that the show has been out and became a no worldwide way. phenomenon basically immediately. Remember they've taken a break. So this is year nine. You know, because oh, it took a year shit. off. Uh, it was literally two years ago when they started season seven. Wow. I was still working at Best Buy when they started season seven. Where the frick was I? Was I still in college? No, you weren't. Wait, when you started? When, when it, Game when of Thrones sh- started. Well, Game of Thrones started, it was what? When did Game of Thrones start? I don't know. Um, Game of Thrones premiere date season one. It was 2011. Die April 2011. Accurate. So this is eight years. It's literally been eight years. Damn. Which, you know, ain't bad. So yes. in the eight years, oops, oh. I got rid of you. Now you're back. In yeah. the eight years, what is your favorite moment in Game of Thrones? Because um, you're, you're the one all, that got me into the show. Yeah, true. Like it was season three. I finally started watching. Joey was like, dude, you got to watch the show. And then I technically illegally streamed them all. And then I got, then I bought them all. <laughs> I do, I own them all. I went back and I bought them. So I think it so does, it, right, right? it does even out the morality because I went and bought <laughs> the Blu-rays before they got cheaper. Like they were expensive for the se- first three seasons. They're like 50 yeah. bucks for the season. Now you can get them for like 30. Yeah. Oh, but I went I back and bought I can't them. I get the whole collection and it's like a dragon head or something cool. I want to, but not a ton of people still have their seasons one, two, and three, and four, and five. Like the individual Blu-rays because um, it's, it's all streaming. That's right? true, yeah. I mean, so the, I might just hang on to my physical so copies. Scary. I'm going to be getting the Supernatural Collected Edition. Dude. It's going to be like $300 because I guarantee you it's going to ship with a with an Impala. Oh, I got a notebook. I got my notebook too, man. Wait, hold on. Like, Are you surprised? He's got a car? sweater vest. Are you surprised he's got a notebook? And a D20 and a fucking notebook. Now we just got to get you some like – we need to get you like a Lord of the Rings poster and something. <laughs> or I got a Lord of the Rings wood burning I can give you. Um, and I'm doing yeah, another one. I'm going to be doing a Minds of Moria one. It's going to be dope. Be and then we got to get you something for your other side too to flank you. Yeah. yeah. All right. We got we got to get some stuff on your wall. Uh, uh, tw- Twitch chat, give us some ideas. Yep. And what we Spam should what, what we should flank Joey with. In All right. YouTube. So to Joey, comment. favorite Game right. of Thrones epi- episode, or you can just go. I want to go a specific moment here. Battle of the Bastards is. I, I think, think you'll have to go down. It's just such a good freaking fight sequence on just everything. When Littlefinger comes in and saves everyone, and well, technically uh, Sansa does Sansa. Yeah, Sansa with Littlefinger. I was, there was like a theory I had for a while that Littlefinger was going to win the throne. Oh, he was running for it. He was going Dude, hard for it. I was like, I was like side rooting for him. I'm like, Littlefinger's getting it. Oh no, I have I. I am, I immediately hated that dude because he was the bad guy in Shanghai Noon or Shanghai Nights. <laughs> That's such a weird reason to hate. Him. Hey, he he constantly played bad guys, so I'm like, yeah, this dude's a bad yeah. guy. Fuck him. True, true. Yes, he makes a good bad guy though. Oh, he's a fantastic uh. bad dude. He's one of the best characters in the show's run. He's fantastic. He just has that face of like he can be good, but you know he's scheming like. Bad I guns. so wanted him to go up against Varys one more time, but I'm happy with how he lost and why he lost. Yeah, I am too. That was a good uh, Battle Bastards is probably still. I want top. Varys to find out that it was Arya and Sansa that that finally beat him, and him go, "Damn!" Oh. And then he's like super respectful of Arya. Yeah. Like, I want to see that cool. shit. I want to see Arya and Varys team up. Be fucking dope. All right, sorry to steal your thunder. Go for Very it. Good. Um, and the pie eating scene, the meat oh, pies with the uh, cold open to season seven. Yes, oh that is God. a good opening scene. What an amazing way to open like the penultimate season. Yeah. Walter Frey, who in the at season six finale, we saw die, so we're like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah. And then he starts talking, and you're like, oh yeah, it's happening. Payback time, bitches. Dude, that was so good. Um, so good. One other scene, it's a little different, mostly because of my gaming history. I like the... When you finally see the dragon become undead, it reminds me of, like, WoW. And, uh... Because, uh, Death Knights, they summon, like, a frost... Giant frost dragon. 
and that just kind of made me think of wow because well, right yeah away. in the in the books that. they set up ice dragons like dragons that literally live inside the wall uh, and that, that that's maybe how they constructed such a thing of ice is that the dragons literally breathed ice okay and they used dragon ice to make the wall potentially True. they haven't set yeah. that up because they haven't finished the books yet but there's some theories about that okay yeah any any, no. any other specific moments that go like fuck yeah uh, Tyrion pissing off the wall. <laughs> that's that that's cool. great in the in the pilot. That's yeah, really it's good. Just, it's just kind of just, I could throw away. Um, do, 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 do. I can't. There's a lot of good scenes, so this could be a long time. Um, um, we're just thinking here. <sighs> Any good portrays I could think of top of my head? You're missing a major one, dude. The red wedding. Oh. Just walk Dude, out. That was Get out of the podcast. A, that was such a tough. I've only seen that episode once, and it fucking will ruin you. I, I will. I will skip over it. It's I terrible. It I so wanted. So I saw a couple of people that we know were re- getting their girlfriends and now wives into the show. They were like, "Oh shit, they're on season three. I DM'd one. I'm like, "Dude." You gonna film that red wedding episode? And he's like, "No, I wish I could, but then she'd know something is up." I'm like, yeah. that's why you gotta be stealthy, man. Call me over. I'll hook up a webcam <laughs> to a laptop with a fifty foot like power cable, so you she won't see it. It'll be great. Nope, didn't happen. I was disappointed in him. That red wedding reveal was so good. Fun. One of the like one of the most standout oh fuck moments. In pretty much all of television history. Like, it's an all-time, yeah. ev- all-time silver screen moment. It's awesome. It has to be. Like, the way it all comes down, like, they don't really set up what's happening until the very end, and <laughs> then, bam, the hammer drops and it all goes down. Awesome. Freaking a. I'd also have to go with, I think, the season four finale, The Hound versus Brienne. Damn, that's a brutal fight. I went and rewatched it recently. Yeah. Fuck, they go to town. For, it's like six minutes. It's it's long, it's a long action scene of both of them in full armor with like broadswords. Oh, Jesus, man. it's long. Also, bladder of ba- the Battle of Blackwater Bay. It's all King's Landing when Stannis is invading, and oh. and then they're like everyone's giving Tyrion shit, and Joffrey's like the full asshole, and Varys and Tyrion trying to plan the defense of the city, and Braun with his awesome side comments oh about like the, the looters and thieves. Who's so like, there has been a, a Varys is like, there's been a marked drop in thievery since you took over, and he's like, yeah, it's because I rounded up all the known thieves and killed them. <laughs> like, wait, what? Like, yeah, and he talks about like being in a city under siege and how, like how that affects people, and it's like really dark stuff just told through exposition basically, but it's yeah. told in a very engaging and like exhilarating kind of way that just like oh this is building tension just every single thing builds up to this moment and then they send out one ship and you're like what and Tyrion's just like hang on bitch i got this (laughs) gives the signal and bron just lights up the bay and the ship explodes in one of the coolest effects i've ever seen on tv and blows up all of Stannis' ships and then sets the harbor on fire around them and behind them so they can only go forward onto the beach while they'll die. And then his speech about, like, the those are brave men knocking at our door. Like, that speech, that whole thing. Yeah. Perfect. So good. And then he doesn't get any credit for it, which is, like, the best. Dude, that... Oh, yeah, that when they're wrapping that scene up, or the the season up, but he's, like, in the kind of depressed because he took, like, half or... Yeah, the next... The, the season three premiere, yeah. Fuck, dude. Yeah, and he's like all pissed because he's like, I literally just yeah. saved this city. And no one gives a fuck. Like, fuck all of you. <laughs> Fantastic moment. Um, what are some things you didn't expect? Like, mine, of course, was beheading of Ned Stark. Like, yeah. when I first started watching, I was like, wait, wait. I, I didn't expect it that soon, but it was also yeah. like, there's no way he sees the end of the series because he's Sean Bean. Like, yeah. he, dies he gets death. the roles where he dies. It's just. Yeah. It's just something di- like about, on like a divine level where he's in a movie or a show you like. You like his character? Oh, he's yeah, fucking dead. Oh, is he the bad guy? He's fucking dead. Oh, don't. Right? Like, is he playing himself? Oh, he's fucking dead. He's dead. Like, it just... <laughs> it's it's just something about him. Oh, killing. 
Uh, uh, the way Joffrey dies. Yeah, I didn't expect it that soon coming. in the season. Like, it was episode three of the season. Fuck. He's just dead. Like, shit. Yeah. That's well, definitely a ballsy way to go in a season. Not make that towards the back end. Definitely levels yeah. up season four quite a bit doing that early. Because yeah. they got they had gotten into a trope of doing the big thing in, in the ninth episode of the season. Or the next to last episode right. of the season. And they still kind of do. Because most yeah. shows will do that. They'll give you the climax. Common and right. then the nine is kind of the season epilogue and set up for the last season. Until the finale. Which has usually a shorter epilogue. It doesn't get a whole episode of epilogue. Usually that's just like the last 15-10 minutes. Tops. <laughs> We'll see if Game of Thrones, yeah, how Game of Thrones does it, of course. But yeah, um, yeah. Um, what is as a whole your favorite season? Ooh, I don't know this one. Um, uh, what is? Oh man. Um, hold on. You say what yours is, and I'm gonna. <laughs> Thanks, for you. Joey wanted to dress up. It was his idea, I swear. Joey's like, I'm wearing a sweater vest, so I'm like, well, fuck. I'll wear, I'll wear a, I'll wear my shirt and tie. I got jeans on. Don't worry, that's not tucked in. I'm a thousand percent pantsless. <laughs> Joey can't stand up right now. I can't stand up. It would uh, not be good. I'd have to cover. I'd have to cover the display capture. <laughs> so you don't have a favorite season? Um, no, I just. No, I honestly don't. Um, because no season I thought was bad. Well, that doesn't that doesn't mean you can't I, I have know, a favorite. But like, and yeah, me, I would say my least favorite is clearly workers. season five. But you need uh, season five is very much a setting up the pieces season, kind of like we call that news anchoring, indeed. Uh, but uh, so yeah, season five is definitely my least favorite, but. It does. You need season five for season six to be as good as it was. Like, they are direct mirrors of oh, each other, and like how everyone yeah. just gets shit on, and all these characters in terrible places, like Arya losing her eyes, and Sansa, like what's going on with her, yeah. and Ramsay, and John dying, and and all these things. And then season six is the opposite. They're all like reclaiming their name, or reclaiming their freedom, or becoming king in the fucking north, and have like you know, and having some awesome moments in season six. Like, like, that's the one. You need a shit season like five to tell season six and have it pay off as effectively as it did. This was a gruesome season because, yeah, Jon Snow dies. That fucking hard home? Oh my god. Fuck. And the mini face god. We learned about him. I thought that was kind of cool. I don't know if you should. Season three. Season three with the Red Wedding? Man, that was Game of Thrones on a whole other level. It was. And yeah, it was still couched in the lore of the books, but goddamn. That was such a great season of the setup with like the Stark and Lannister war and then how it ends just so suddenly. Like that was really that was an amazing swerve and such a great season of TV. Uh and then uh I would say for me it's somewhere ballpark 6 and 3 are kind of together for my favorite seasons. Uh 7's close. I really I don't mind the fast travel bullshit. Like are you, yeah. are you kidding me? You want to complain about fast travel? Do you even <laughs> watch TV? Like, <laughs> seriously, I'll take this to another, like, nerd show. Go watch Smallville. Yeah. Smallville's in fucking Kansas, right? Metropolis is basically New York. They're, well, now, in the in their show, it's basically their version of St. Louis. But still, okay. like, it's clearly set up to be, like, six hours, and people are just constantly back and fucking forth. Like, seriously, guys. Like, that's one of those really- shows. It's such a... It, t- fast travel happens all the fucking time you don't want to watch characters in the la- second to last season you don't want to watch them take the whole fucking way there that setup has been done in the early seasons like in the pilot we see them taking days to get to the capital oh, you don't want to yeah. watch that for eight fucking years you don't. you don't that would be so fucking boring by the end fast travel's fine get the fuck over it it made a really good meme though and yeah like <laughs> Exactly. That's another great thing. Like the tr- the route between things is slow in the first season to set up your world. You're showing the distances. You're getting people used to the idea of the map in their head. Also showing them physically in in lore, but also just within how the scenes are cut together. You're showing the pace of the world, and you're ingraining that in them so that way you can speed it up later in the year 
to speed up your storytelling, to get to your narrative beats faster, to pay off your story threads faster, especially because they're condensing the season. It's entirely necessary from a storytelling perspective to do that. So get the fuck over it. But I want I don't want to yell anymore at, at idiots. <laughs> I'm sure I will to later on in the episode oh, yeah. at some point. But that that's that part for now. So Joey, do you have give you gotta give us a favorite season. I will not let you off the hook here. Uh, uh and no copying actually, me. Damn it, you did. Oh six or seven, cause which season was get the fucking Battle of the Bastards? Battle of the Bastards. That was six. That was six? Okay. Yeah, that was six. Yep, seven. Seven was uh, Daenerys on Dragonstone. Okay. Yeah, that actually was pretty cool. Yeah, it was awesome. I like who gives a shit about the vast travel. That shit was dope. And then, like, I like the little bit. It tells a little bit more the kind of the pre Game of Thrones with like uh, the setup of the children and the White Walkers. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, setup of the children and everything. Because I thought that was uh, pretty cool. Because like, damn, I actually like that. Yeah. And then all the dragon glass they're trying to harvest up, and then... Which, to be fair, I've been re-watching that. That still doesn't look good. Like, I can still barely see what they're trying to show, and it's supposed to be this moment of epicness and awe about this mountain of dragon glass. I, you, you can't fucking see it. Like, there's oh. not enough light. For I mean, It's apparently supposed to be this, like, super thing where, like, this light is reflecting off all this glass, but it's like, it's black glass! You need a lot of fucking light to make that work effectively as a visual. Could have bumped that up about 50% minimum for it to have the effect I think they were going for. But that's besides the point. Um, so that's what we think about our favorite episodes of Game of Thrones and our favorite moments slash seasons. Let's talk about season eight predictions here. So, All right. Joey. Uh, yes. Which main character is going to die first in season eight? Oh, fuck. Who's going to bite that White Walker bullet to the face? White Walker bullet. Um, like, it's, take a bullet to the head. I know. Who's gonna bite the bullet first? I got first. a bullet with a name stuck in my head. Um, do, 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 do. First will be. Where's the hound at currently? He should be on his way back to Winterfell. Okay. With everybody else. He won't die right away. Oh no, we need Clegane Yeah, we need him. Um, that needs to happen, and he needs to beat. The undead taken over by the White Walkers version of his brother. His dude's already undead. He yeah. ain't alive. So he yeah, should just immediately the White Walkers could just immediately go You murder her. Oh, it'd be really sad to see the guy in the red beard go. Shit. Tormund? Tormund. Yeah. I'm I'm putting money on that now. Now I, I see it. Alright, okay. I'm gonna counter that oh. by saying I don't think you kill off the face of the wildlings that early. I think that's an end game death if he dies. Okay. That's uh the 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 walls are closing in. All of the Stark allies and stuff are dying because the White Walkers are around them. I think Tormund leads the last defense of Winterfell or whatever, and then dies. And then John's got to kill one of his friends again because he comes yeah. back as an undead. Um, Fusion says Podrick. I'm also of the mind it's probably Podrick, but I don't know if I count him as a main character. He's definitely a side character in my eyes. A strong side character. Like, he's very much a strong supporting character. But I'm talking of the main group. So, meaning, like, the Starks, yep. the Lannisters, Daenerys' group, um, and probably Brienne, the Hound, Tormund. Um, yeah, the Hound, we need Clegable. Tormund is the face of the White Walker, so I don't think he dies. Um, I don't know. I could see Brianna and Padra going at the same time early uh, during the initial assault on Winterfell. Because I think we're going to see how it's Magic Dick, not a main. I, I don't know. Is he is he a regular? Is he even counted as a regular? I don't think he is. Do we count, do we count regulars as just title card characters? I don't know. Ooh, we have to figure tell. that out. There's He's so definitely a recurring character. So if you want to include him in a yeah. recurring... Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's going to be a Podrick. It's going to be a, a shock factor moment of killing a favorite character very early in the year or in the season. So that wouldn't shock me at all uh, to see him and I think Brienne at the same time. Uh, especially, uh, I, don't, I don't, you know, I don't know. 
but I don't know about Brienne. I know it's really tough to figure out like who's going to bite the dust first. Depends on when he shows up to Winterfell. If he's in the if he's in the premiere, I think he's dead in episode three. Jamie, if he shows up in the premiere in Winterfell, how fast he gets there? Obviously, I think he will, given how fast the seasons are going, and they've only got six episodes. Um, I don't think he makes it through. But there's also the the dark horse theory that instead of John being the prince, of, like whatever, and now I do think the prince that was promised was actually Rhaegar Targaryen, because George R. R. Martin would totally be the writer who's like, yeah, the hero died like thirty years ago. We're in the aftermath now, bitches. Um, I do think Theon might die saving his sister. Uh, that's a good one. I th- forgot about Theon. Oh fuck yeah! Damn it. He's been through a lot too. I mean, that seems very plausible. Yeah, like actually being proactive. Yeah, about he wants his to decision. redeem himself so bad. Because he's been asking for forgiveness and all that, but he's like, no, you gotta yeah. actually fucking do something, bro. Yeah. Um, and yeah, don't get me wrong. Saving Sansa and like leaving off the, the ramparts of Winterfell and stuff, that's cool. But you know, yeah. like, don't abandon your sister, you fucking dick. Yeah. You fucking dickless Dude. dick. And then oh, oh. go save her. Sorry. I couldn't leave that unsaid. Uh, I could see that happening. So chat, anybody else besides Fusion want to give us a little... Uh, your take on who's going to die first? Who's going to become an undead person that someone's going to have to lop their head off with a Valerian steel dagger or sword with? <laughs> Sam. So while the chat's giving us their answer on who's going to die first, Joey. Yeah. Who wins the Game of Thrones? Who gets to declare Yahtzee while on the Iron <laughs> Throne? <sighs> Bold move to say no one. That's like a very freaking... Oh, that would be... Move. That would be J.R.R. to a T. Do you th- yeah, nobody wins because the hero died 30 years ago. Fucking dumbasses. Oh, man. Be quite a throwaway. Um, I don't know. Some of that work had a really good theory I kind of liked. Um, you know what? Would you mind telling us what that theory was? Basically, they lose King's Landing and end up kind of like a handful of them. Uh, I can't remember what he said. Uh, Daenerys and then like uh, the Stark family kind of end up sailing away as like they see White Walkers overrunning everything and they have to go up to across the sea and try to like convince them to help take back the land or something ballpark of that. Like I've been kind of cool, but it's gonna end there. But I don't. That's that's too many episodes. I know. That's what I was thinking. Is like God, would it have eight episodes to tell a story like that? Um. I'm going to say a Stark of some sort ends up on the throne. I'm not for sure who, because I'm kind of torn. What was um, that accent you put on who? What? All right, no. so my prediction is thus. Daenerys goes crazy. Going full Mad Queen. John has to kill her. So no, he don't want the throne. He barely wants Winterfell. He ain't taking the throne. Yeah. Not unless he's asked by if if they if if Daenerys stays good and all that, and they stay together. Yeah, he'll be king. She'll be queen. Um. Yeah, the gold clo the gold the golden company will arrive, and I bet Euron's gonna be like, okay, seriously, I can't be king if everybody's dead. So fuck it, gold cloaks, gold golden company. We're going to the north. Fuck Cersei. I I could see him pulling the the fast one on Cersei, and then the gold clo- gold company all die too, and then everyone's like. All right, Cersei, let's fucking go. And then they murder her. And Arya just gets a little stabby stabby in there. Because she I should. Still think, I still think Jamie's going to kill her, though. I think, yeah, I could see it. I could totally see Jamie being the one that has to kill her. Because that's that, like part of the prophecy where, like, she's going she's gonna to miscarry. And then I think because she's going crazy and, like, ordering everybody to die, much like the Mad King did, Jamie's going to kill her. Yeah. I could just, see that. That seems very. Bookendish for a for yeah. a finale for a st- for a character arc for Jamie. He starts being a king slayer and then he's gonna be the queen slayer kind of thing. I or see- does he like jump off ramparts holding her? No, he does a two. Dude, wait, what? What do you jump off ramparts? What are you talking about? It's like the fuck? Embracer jumps off the side of. A- oh, he's not gonna kill himself. He's clearly over her. Clearly, like yeah, we're fucking done. Um. So yeah, I think he's just gonna kill her. I could see that being her her end is at Jamie's hands, like literally his golden hand just forcing her like up against like the floor or something and choking her to death. Choking her to death. Ooh, um, your dark hand. Yeah, because it's not like you could break apart that hand. No, you really can't. You really can't. Um, what do you do? Gold. Yeah. 
Um, and I think if anyone's going to end up on the throne, it's that's not Daenerys. It's probably going to be Gendry. Like, oh, shit, yeah. bringing him back for two episodes, that seems a little, little unnecessary. Because A, him and Arya are probably going to be a thing. And then he's also the last king's actual son. Yeah. Like, the last universally recognized king was Robert Baratheon. He's his son, and everybody knows it. Like, like John knows it. Like, uh, Davos knows it. And, like, people are going to be like, oh, shit, you look, like, exactly like Robert. Because he's set up in the books. Uh, now, it's him, this version of Gendry is set up as a allegation of different bastards of Robert Baratheon. But the right. main story part that they're taking after him, like the whole leeches and Davos saving him from the Red Witch and all that, that's based on the one everyone's like, yeah, you look exactly like Robert. So people are going to buy it. And if anyone's going to end up, I could see it being him. Um, but, and then continuing the whole Baratheon-Stark familial friendship thing going on. But for um, that to happen, something has to have to Darius. Well, that's what I think. If she if she goes crazy, yeah. John probably kills her because she went mad king, mad queen crazy and was trying to murder everyone with dragon fire. And then he kills her. And he's like, all right, I'm just going to go back to the north. Fuck all this shit. And, uh, yeah. Plus, we need to have an awesome... I want I want Tormund to become the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. That'd be dope. <laughs> that would just be fucking hilarious. <laughs> and then he outlaws all the celibacy. Cel- celibacy? <laughs> Fuck that. Like and the and like the what the wildlings literally become the Night's Watch and like actually like do like set up set all that up and like start rebuilding the castles and all that. That'd be a really cool I can set, see that. Yeah. cool ending for that for that arc of the story. Um Exactly. It ain't gonna happen, Fusion. It ain't gonna happen. And it would be such a great fitting end for his character to now become the Night's Watch like commander. Like, it'd be fantastic. Um, and if I like have to rebuild the wall and whatnot, he'd be like, "Yeah, let's just like not do a wall. That'd yeah. be cool." Uh, yeah, the whole thing. So that do we got anything to add for for our predictions, Joey? No, nope, because now I'm just looking at fan art. All right, okay, so. let's not do that. <laughs> Good thing you're not streaming. Don't to my screen. <laughs> get a little weird, <laughs> and we'd probably have to take it all down. Um, so yeah. Now we're going to move into what I think should be our final segment, because we don't have time for Endgame. Okay. Don't worry. True. We're going to do an Endgame podcast about all about Endgame. Number one, we have our MCU in review show that's coming up. Uh, we're going to be doing Phase 3 on April 20th, five, a five-man podcast with the aforementioned Mr. Fusion News in our chat right now. What about Sam? Oh, no. Sam? Sam becomes the Warden of the South. Yeah. He gets High Garden. Yeah. And he's like, and he gets to lord over. And I want, I want to see a scene of him lording it over, the or kind of like subtly lording over the citadel. Like, yeah, bitches, I was right the whole fucking time. And he gets, he gets high garden. Totally Very cool. Yep, uh, because his dad was going to become the warden of the south, and there is no warden of the yeah. south. So yeah, Atarly would probably get it. It makes the most sense um, if he lives. Ooh. True. But they ain't gonna kill him because he's basically the stand-in of George R. R. Martin, which is like how he was written in as like the bookish nerd <laughs> in a world of fighters and badasses. Fighters. Okay. Yeah, and R. Martin said like, yeah, that's I literally like kind of like wrote myself into the story without putting my name to it initially. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I don't think he does. Um, and I think he becomes some like important leader and whatever in the world because he should. Uh, doesn't become a maester and all that. So, Joey, it's time for our yes. last segment because we're going to move Endgame later as we're doing yep. the MCU in review in a couple weeks. And then we're going to do an Endgame-specific podcast review about that. But we might have a predictions one the Monday before Endgame, which I think makes the most sense. Kind of like how we're doing it the week before, uh, yeah. the week of the Game of Thrones premiere. And this is not going to always be on Tuesday. We moved it yeah. to Tuesday because my work schedule's been fucking sure. crazy. Like, I was at yeah. work for nearly 14 hours on Sunday. Nice. Uh, when I'm supposed to be a 95 Monday to Friday job, so <laughs> get some extra overtime though, which will be real Hell nice. Yeah. Cash money's. Right, um, so we are moving on to fuck it. We'll do it live. Yeah. Where we're gonna watch a trailer or a clip or a part of a thing we've never watched. Now, Joey. Yes. First things first. On the realist. Have you seen the end game clip? The one I linked in our in our doc. Uh, no. Okay, 
Now, spoilers, this takes a minute, 13 seconds. Anybody not want to see this, let us know. Wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on what? Live nope, podcast, I haven't y'all. Seen that. I haven't seen that. Do you want to watch it? Uh, I'll watch it. Why not? Okay. I think it's, I That'll be the last thing we do. Okay. I'm just giving everyone fair warning. We are going to watch a clip of that. So if you don't want to see that, we'll let you know. Tell us in chat. We'll let you know. And then you can bounce. Okay? Because it'll be the last thing we do. Because that's like, that's like the hypest of hype. Like Game of Thrones hype is for real. Endgame hype's on another fucking level. Like it's not even Ooh. funny. It's gonna break. It's probably I... it's gonna break every record. And no, I don't think anything is gonna top it. Anything Marvel does after this, this may be the jumping the shark moment where they it's so big nothing can be as big as this again. Yeah, but I don't know if I'm hyped for more for Endgame or Game of Thrones. Oh, I'm like... totally hyped for Endgame. Like Game of Thrones is cool. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. We got we got six weeks to live out that hype. Endgame's two like three hours of just pure amazingness. All right, Jaren doesn't want to watch this. Jaren, we will let you know when it's the Jaren. last thing we do. And then you just immediately close the, close the screen, and then we'll do our sign-off basically right yeah. afterwards. Okay? All right, but now we're going to do it, fucking do it live, but we're going to do it to Joker. Really? Yeah, we're going to do the Joker trailer. I have yeah. not seen it yet. Joey has. Usually the fuck it was it live is going to be me showing Joey it's stuff. It's he's, <laughs> he's always fucking behind on shit. Like, it's I blew his mind with the John Wick trailer. He was like... Yeah, fucking katanas on on motorcycles. What? He's on a horse. What? It was amazing. It was such a great trailer, and I blew Joey's mind with it. So Joey, here we go. Ready? Hit play. In three, two, one, go. Arthur, does it help to have someone to talk to? My mother always tells me to smile and put on a happy face. She told me I had a purpose. To bring laughter and joy to the world. Is it just me? Or is it getting crazier out there? Your heart is aching, smile, even though it's breaking. When there are clouds in the sky, you'll get by. What? If you smile <laughs> to your fear and sorrow, smile, and maybe tomorrow. <laughs> What's so funny? Just... Freak! <laughs> Gotham has lost its way. What kind of coward would do something that cold-blooded? Someone who hides behind a mask. I used to think that my life was a tragedy. But now I realize it's a comedy. Please. All right. So initial thoughts. Number one, I think this is going to take like 20 years. Like it's going to be a chronological and like an anthology type movie yep. where it shows him living like over the years becoming the Joker. There's a shot where we see him lift a curtain and it's like Robert, like there was like Robert De Niro or somebody who very much looked like him as like a host, mm-hmm. but to bring him on. Very much a Joker story where he would just kill everyone in the audience with like laughing gas or whatever. Um, or do something like incredibly like, shocking to the host and like take almost, take everyone hostage. Almost mimicking that one part where on the TV you see the one guy come on. 
And then... And the one guy talking about like who would do something like that hiding yeah, behind a mask. Clearly guess. Thomas Wayne. I think they're setting that up to be Batman's dad. Okay. Um, which makes sense because like if they're doing it chronologically, you'd have his dad at the end of like the middle, say. Or like end of first act, beginning of act two, or however you would structure it. And then you have him do this um, this terrible Joker thing, the crime, right? And then maybe you do a tag or whatever, and like it's the police outside, and then Batman lands on a car. Cut to black. Like that'd be pretty fucking cool. That'd be a good way to end. I'd Not watch the shit out of that. Yeah, because um, right now, the way this trailer goes, I didn't realize I wanted a Joker movie till now. Like I. Like, I wasn't sold on watching this movie until seeing the trailer. And I've heard this about people talking about the trailer. Like, I watch a lot of kind of funny stuff, and they were talking about the mm-hmm. trailer. And I was like, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's a good trailer. Don't get me wrong. It's a very good trailer. It definitely yeah. sells a movie that was having a hard time, I think, selling itself based on the hype that was started. I think a good trailer can do that for a movie. And this one, I think, probably will. Plus, the names attached to it, Todd Phillips and Martin Scorsese. Uh, very good, you know, di- like people on as a production and director side of things and walking phoenix is a fantastic actor he's got some i think oh. issues off camera uh you know with being a crazy lunatic sometimes but uh i'm so i'm excited to see what he would can do with the character and if they do stick with it being a standalone thing that's great but i would love to see like them continuing to do like multiple storylines with multiple characters like fuck fuck canon Basically, like if they really want to commit cool. to the directors can tell their own story, let's have three Batman. Yeah. Fuck it. Who cares? Right? Like you got a Batman on TV. Now who's going to be Batman yeah. in the Gotham series finale? You got a Superman oh, on TV and a Superman in the movies and a Batman in the movies. The only thing we don't have dual of basically is, is Wonder Woman because we've got dual flashes and we, we might be getting, I hope if they continue doing Justice League Whoa. stuff, you'd think they're going to eventually do dual green arrows. Um, which if they want to like get rid of a Batman type character and do like Nightwing and another another human level character, you'd probably bring in Green Arrow to get that rich the you know rich billionaire Playboy dude. Yeah, you just bring in Green Arrow. It'd be pretty much the same thing. What if you told a Batman story from the side of the Joker? And that's where I think they could do this, where it's like it's all set up for the Joker Fuck. origin, his first big crime, and then set up. Bam! Here's Batman. Cut. Oh shit! Fuck. Yeah, we have dual cyborgs and like all that. Uh, can we do the a Dark Knight movie night? Heath Ledger Joker. Like, don't get me wrong. I think Joaquin Phoenix is gonna kill it. I really think he is. I think he is. I think it's gonna be different. You all know, right. we're not gonna get the the, you know, the crazy the craziness. I think of. I think Hamill's or Ledger's because Hamill's Hamill's Joker. My fucking god, that voice. It's perfect. Whether it's in the in the in the video games, in the animated stuff, holy fucking, this, fucking shit! And uh, Troy Baker's basically imperson- impersonation of that, also equally fantastic. But it's an impersonation, not the original, so it doesn't get as many points. <laughs> um, but if anyone's gonna do more animated Joker stuff, God, just fucking give it to Troy Baker. Holy shit, that dude's fantastic. Um, yeah, f- anything's better than the fucking bullshit Joker we got in that one. Um, I still want them to do a whole opening Justice League 2 or whatever, or World's Finest, if they make a World's Finest movie. The opening to it is the OG, you get a, a new Joker and a new Lex, the, like, they just kill, uh, the, the Jesse Eisenberg and Jared Leto Jokers. They just Dude, show up, murder so their good. clones, and be like, fuck this. We're back. And a hard cut to Justice League, World's <laughs> Finest. Bam. Be awesome. Because the Lex thing, he has clones is like all his shit like yeah, he gives the lex stuff shit for the clones like they do like spider-man's like the clone saga and all that shit that sucked but lex has clones like all the fucking time it's like his thing right and then you get a set up you set up with the clone of superboy which would be really cool and i think a character the dceu could use a lot more of because they've definitely set themselves up to do like a titans slash young justice type type movie and ongoing story if they want to in the dceu you know, with, with how younger, how much younger Flash, which is basically, they call him Barry, but he's really Wally from the Justice League show, okay. not Barry. Okay. He's as much Barry as that Wally West was really Wally West. The Wally West in Justice League cartoon was basically Barry Allen. They just wrote him to be Wally West. 
Um, so you have a young Flash, a young, uh, young cyborg, and presumably, uh, in you know, in in an experienced Nightwing slash just getting out of being the Robin role, Dick Grayson, because Jason Todd clearly died. Um, yeah. And like, man, they could really do a Teen Titans on Justice show if, a movie if they wanted Very to. Good. Beyond Titans, which they have, but they're to- clearly totally fine with doing recurring characters now. They're clearly getting over that, which is good. As big as much as yeah. their stable is, their, their stable is fucking huge in characters, and they own them all. Go I mean, nuts! Go crazy! Never. And it's clearly working for them. DC Universe is actually, I think, doing pretty well according to the numbers I've seen. They now have all the all twenty five thousand whatever comics they published. Like, yes. yeah, like it's all there. Their entire library is on DC Universe now, which is awesome. Holy and it's still shit. only eight bucks. Like they're doing that without price hiking. I thought they'd do that when they price hiked it yeah, to get people like to a... reinvent to reincentivize on a price hike. Be like, shit, that's awesome. <laughs> um, and not to mention, Young Justice season three has been fantastic so far. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think Joker could be pretty cool. Dude, I'm I'm like... I'm gonna definitely go see it opening weekend. It's definitely mm-hmm. not gonna be a hey let's go Thursday night movie. Like Endgame's yeah. gonna be we're gonna see it Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah, because I, re- I already uh was on the first no Friday on that day. And I'm Yeah, I need to, I need to put vacation. in my, my half day for Friday. Shit. Cause what is it? I potentially might see it twice Friday then. Yeah. Cause... It's well, that's six six hours, dude. Dude. It's a three it. hour it's a three hour <laughs> three hours, two minutes, I think. Holy shit. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. And speaking yeah. of Endgame, it's that time. So if you do not want to watch the last thing we do, which is the Endgame clip that just came out like, like it was yesterday, time to bounce. So, Jaron, let us know when you're out, and we'll watch the clip. <laughs> Joey, do you have the clip pulled up? Yes, I do. Fantastic. Also, Jaron's on a huge delay, so this is going to take a while. Later, people. Thank you for hanging out, Jaron. Yep. Talk to you in Discord, my dude. All right. Play in three, two, one. Play. He used the stones again. Hey, hey, hey. We'd be going in shorthanded, you know? Look, he's still got the stones, so... So let's get him. Use them to bring everyone back. Just like that. Yeah. Just like that. Even if there's a a small chance that we can undo this, I mean, we owe it to everyone who's not in this room to try. If we do this, how do we know it's going to end any differently than it did before? Because before you didn't have me. Hey, new girl, everybody in this room is about that superhero life. And if you don't mind my asking, where the hell have you been all this time? There are a lot of other planets in the universe. And unfortunately, they didn't have you guys. Wait, it didn't go? Here, we're going to replay it, Joey. Get. Sorry, my hotkey broke. Here we go. Eh, Play in three. eh. You ready? Sorry, gang. We're going to cut around that for the YouTube version. I'll try to remember (laughs) that. Here we go. Three, two, one. He used the stones again. Hey, hey, hey. We'd be going in shorthanded, you know? Look, he's still got the stones, so... So let's get him. Use them to bring everyone back. Just like that. Yeah, just like that. Even if there's a a small chance that we can undo this, I mean, we owe it to everyone who's not in this room to try. If we do this, how do we know it's going to end any differently than it did before? Because before you didn't have me. Hey, new girl, everybody in this room is about that superhero life. And if you don't mind my asking, where the hell have you been all this time? There are a lot of other planets in the universe. And unfortunately, they didn't have you guys. (laughs) I like this one. Let's go get this son of a bitch. Language. Also, where'd the beard go? Dude, yeah. I... 
That was like the first thing I saw. I'm like, no. Yeah. Don't do that to me. So two things. Number one, I was yep. reading about the clip. And yeah, this was filmed before Captain Marvel. So she looks different. Okay. Because the, she didn't know where they were going to go with the character. Hadn't even seen the script for Captain Marvel yet. So okay. she does look a little different. That was brought yeah, up. Buildings. And Black Widow's hair. Fusion? I'm kind of joking because like, oh, the whole fade thing to red thing. But this is very clearly early in the movie. Like, very clearly. Because her oh, yeah. hair is still blonde. How many times are they going to fight Thanos in this? I'm wondering if it's more than once. It feels like they've done it. They've tried it before without her. No, that's that's Again. the first. That's Infinity War. Okay, yeah, well, like it's Infinity War. That do it like that, twice in this movie. I'm wondering in this movie, how many times are they going to fight him? And he's going to know. I'm guessing they go fight him. I'm, I'm thinking twice in this movie. They go okay. fight him the first time. They find him. They take the Quinjet and they find him with just the OG the OG crew minus Tony and yeah. Rocket and and with Captain Marvel and they take the Quinjet and they get there right. And then I'm guessing Thanos makes, sends them back in time but keeps them aware that they lost. And sends them back to Earth knowing that they failed again. Then Tony comes back with Nebula and the Milano and, and they're dealing with their loss and the fact that they failed again. And then Ant-Man shows up. And like everyone, and like Tony, like they get, they reunite with Tony, and they think everything's dead, and everything's fucked, and they can't win because Thanos has the fucking time stone. Bam! Ant Man yeah. shows up, be like, "Hey guys, time travel's cool, yo. I can go into the quantum realm. Here we go." And then fight two happens. Explain all the suits. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah! I'm all Captain about that. Does Captain America have a beard on the trailer with the suit though? That's I think. Maybe part two. That's the second fight. He's just like, fuck it, here's the beard just going Just the beard back. It brings me power. No, right? I think he also has a shield, by the way. Oh, I no, we're getting, the, we're getting the we're getting the shield moment. I want, I, want the, I want a cap. If this is Steve Rogers' last moment, and this is one one thing I want, not a prediction. I don't, think, I don't know if it's going to happen. This is one, before we wrap up, this is one thing I want to say. I want Cap to pick up fucking Stormbreaker, rock the shield, and go to fucking town. Whoa! Be amazing. It'd basically be, be what they did with cool. Superman in the in the crossover with the DC Marvel crossover when Superman picks up Mjolnir, rocks Cap's shield, and just fucking wrecks fools. I want to see that. I want to see Cap do that. If this is I his last go, let him go to town, to man. Oh God. And yeah, oh. Ant Man of course is the is the linchpin because of the quantum realm and the time yeah. vortexes that were set up in Ant Man and the Wasp. So I think they're gonna fight him twice and fail the first time with everybody. With with Captain Marvel, and then, then Tony comes back, deal with it like they're reuniting, and the fact that yeah we lost man like we can't win, and Cap's all defeatist, and we can't win, and how do we live, and how do we move on from all this, and then Ant Man shows up, be like, what's up dudes, I'm here for it, I'm fucking here they, for it. What's your theory on getting Iron or Tony back? Oh they they clearly come back in the Milano because the Milano's in like. I think they're gonna. Either, I I think it's either gonna be, uh, yeah. I could see Doctor Strange having left a message, or uh, instructions on how to get out of the time yeah. realm, uh, of the time vortexes to to Scott. Um, totally could see that because he he saw into the future and he knew. Ooh, I need to do this. Da 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 da. da. Um, I could. I would love it if uh, Kraglin or whatever from G Gal Guardians Two shows up to the Milano to be like, "Hey guys, need some gas," and then boom, they just get to Earth. I totally see them doing that. I think that'd the be Milano fantastic. Is the Guardians no, of the no, Galaxy. it's not the Milano. It's uh, what's the two name? It's the Benatar. It's the Benatar. The second okay. version of his ship. The Milano was destroyed. The second the version Milano of Milano is yeah. a really delicious cookie. No, Alyssa Milano. No. You cut out, Joy. It's a cookie, Tom. No, it's not. Well, it is, but it's it's not <laughs> clearly not his reference. I know. I know. Uh, and the second <laughs> one is the Benatar of Pat Benatar. Uh, yeah. Oh. Um, but yeah, those. That's like that's what I think based on that clip is that that clip is from very early in the movie. Yeah. Also, I got a bone to pick with somebody, and this is probably Dude. never gonna. Eat. I was rewatching. I was watching the RT podcast, and they were talking about like, and everybody says this. Oh, Infinity War breaks Ragnarok. No, it fucking doesn't. And I'm I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna also say this on the MCU podcast. But in case you don't watch both, 
He's clearly using his powers in Infinity War the same way he does in Ragnarok. Only he also has a super powerful badass axe. Like, watch him jump. He's clearly using lightning like he is in Ragnarok. Clearly. It's just very focused. Like how it was said he was supposed to be using his power with Mjolnir. That's well, the point. Mjolnir didn't make him is what they are getting he, at. But he was acting like it did. He didn't use his powers like he was should yeah. have been doing, which is he's this awesome lightning rod, basically, and the hammer yeah. is, the, is the focus. In Infinity War, he clearly is using his powers like that. Right? That's... that's yeah. I don't think... Remember. And everyone's forgetting that. And it's fucking pissing me off. And it's fucking Matt Holland brought that up on the RT podcast. And no one corrected oh. him. Like, guys, come on. It's very <laughs> clearly set up. Earlier in the movie, he doesn't do that. He doesn't lightning up when fighting Thanos on the ship. But he does at the end. So it doesn't break Ragnarok. Pay attention. That's all I gotta say. Are... We're wrapping up. I don't wanna, I don't wanna I... get on a rant. I was gonna get... dive into Ragnarok. Wait a minute. That, that's for the MCU because Joey fucking hates that movie like a fucking tool. So, yeah. <laughs> it's the salt of my mind. I don't want it. All right. all right. Yeah, it's a great movie. Who wouldn't want to watch that shit? Jeff Goldblum being amazing and all that. But whatever. <laughs> Who cares? We're wrapping up. Thank you for watching our inaugural episode of The Bottom of Just of the bottom Shelf Nerds presents Just BSing. Uh, we're going to hopefully do this weekly. Uh, a lot of the, the preceding six episodes, the next six episodes, sorry, succeeding six episodes, are going to focus succeeding. around Game of Thrones. Uh, because we're going to be hopefully doing this Mondays after Game of Thrones drops on Sunday nights. And of course, we'll have an Endgame Predictions podcast the week of Endgame. <laughs> Thanks for coughing during my outro, Joey. That, uh, that's my we're going to have an We're going to have an Endgame podcast when Endgame is coming out. We may have a special guest on that. I need to reach out to said special guest who may or may not be in the chat right now. Uh, we'll uh-huh. see what happens. Uh, we, we'll be bringing guests on this show from time to time, uh, but... It is definitely a two-man show for the most part right now. And we'll see where that goes. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. And, of course, yeah, if you're you watching this on YouTube or you're listening on an audio format, you should you should definitely check us out over at twitch.tv slash bottom shelf nerds. Remember to like, subscribe, I don't want to say download, that shit. Just, we do don't really it. use the YouTube that much. Just come watch us live. That's what we want. We want the chat interaction. We want to talk on Discord. We want to talk shit to each other yeah. live, you know, and vaguely in person. So, see ya. Have a good night or day or whatever. Bye.